Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome back for the Courageously Intentional Living Show. I am your host, Jen Iris. I'm super excited to talk about this topic today because it's really, really important. So say hi to me when you hop on. Let me know that you're here. Let me know that you can see me and hear me okay. Give me a hashtag live if you're joining for the live and a hashtag replay if you are joining for the replay. I'm just going to check real quick and make sure that I am live in the right place. I should be. My hair is kind of crazy today. Uh, it's still a little wet from my shower, so don't mind it. It's poking out in all kinds of places. It looks like I am live. Hello, hello. If you haven't given StreamYard permission to see your name yet, there is a link above in the description that you can click and you give permission for StreamYard to see your name. And then I can see who is commenting comments below. I have a squeaky chair. Hi, Nicola. Awesome. You can see me and hear me. Good, good. Um, I always like to check because I don't want to end up talking for a half an hour and um, have it have there be no sound. I recorded a whole video training for one of my challenges and um, there was no sound when I went to post it. And so I had to re-record it. And so I like to make sure that everyone can hear me. So today's topic is how to be the hero of your own story. So this is a really, really important topic, I feel, especially for women and especially for moms, because sometimes we get caught up in this, um, this cycle of life. We get on this hamster wheel. We start to get kind of stuck, and then we start to feel like things are ha happening to us, and life is ha happening to us. And the thing is, we have the power to change this. We have the power to step into an empowered version of ourselves because we are the hero of our own stories. So um, I don't remember where I heard this originally or somebody said it to me or I read it, but um, they said to me that no one is coming to save you. And it was kind of like, oh, <laughs> like it kind of took me aback for a second. And then I really thought about it and it was like, well, um, you know, even if I am going to ask for help, right, which is a, a okay thing to do, a great thing to do. And sometimes we struggle to do that, asking for help, right? If I'm not willing to help myself, no amount of help that someone else is going to give me is going to work. I have to be ready and willing to help myself and step up and do the hard work to make stuff happen in my life. And so by that, we end up being the hero of our own own stories. No one else can save us but ourselves, right? People can help us along the way. They can guide us along the way, right? But we have to be ready and willing to jump in there and do it ourselves. Good morning, Candice. Thanks for joining. So I want to go through um, four things to do, four things to do to be the hero of your own story. So the first thing is to know yourself really important to know yourself. Now, this isn't something that um, we just do once and then um, it's over like a step one check mark kind of thing. This is something that happens throughout the process and we are con continually evolving and growing and changing. So we, it's so easy to lose ourselves in the day-to-day -day life, to lose ourselves in being a mom or being a partner, being a spouse and forget who we are a little bit. We want to come back and uncover who we are and get to know ourselves again, get to know ourselves a little better. I know that this has happened to me in the past. I got so caught up in, in doing all these things and, um, you know, having, taking care of all these things, the day-to-day -day life, the hamster wheel, taking care of everybody else and giving that I didn't even know what I liked anymore. I didn't even know what I enjoyed. I, and I, lost a bit of myself and I had to reconnect with myself and get to know myself again and get to know the new version of myself because throughout life our experiences change us and what we learn what we experience how we grow that that changes us over time so I had to get to know myself a little bit we want to bring that stuff back to the surface the light and the dark even the stuff that maybe we see as not as good. We want to get to know that part of ourselves. Um, 
we want to get to know the things that we like about ourselves, the things that we enjoy, um, what we value, what's important to us, and also the things on the other end of the spectrum. What are some of the things that maybe we don't like as much that we can then uh, become aware of and change? We want to bring all this stuff up to the surface and figure out who we are again. So, you know, what beliefs do we have? What limiting beliefs do we have? This is really important. We need to uncover those beliefs that might be limiting us in our lives. And how are we holding ourselves back? Um, you know, what's holding us back from being ourselves, from living the life that we want to live? We need to get to know these things a little bit, um, get to know these limiting beliefs so that we can then take the steps to change them. And then figuring out what that step is. What's the next step? Um, okay, there's there's this thing that I love about myself. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to bring it back to the surface. Um, I'm going to be this best version of myself. And there's this other thing I brought to the surface that maybe, you know, I don't care for this as much. It's a limiting belief or it's something about myself that I'd like to change. What is the next step to change that? So we want to get to know ourselves, okay? Number two, the next thing you're going to do is take self-responsibility and accountability. So let's go back to this, no one is going to save you, right? Um, the responsibility is on us to create the life that we love, to create the story that we want. We can change that story at any moment. We can change the narrative of that story. We have to, um, you know, often it's easier to place the blame outside of ourselves. And no doubt, things happen in our lives. Things happen that are out of our control, that impact our life, that impact our day-to-day -day being. This happens. Things happen, okay? And we do get to choose how to respond to that. So we might not have control over the situation. We might ha not have control over what happens, how, when it happens. We do get to choose. You get to choose how to respond to that. So in that situation, we still have a choice, right? So blaming society, blaming our parents, blaming the universe, whatever it is, is not going to serve us. We need to come back to us and what we can do. What are the parts that we can do and take responsibility for in the situation to change things? Um, you know, these, th these other things, they do have an impact on us, okay? Um, we also have an impact. We have an impact on our lives. So we need to take responsibility for our choices, whether that's how we respond to something, how, you know, what action we take, how we choose to view something, perspective. These are all really, really important. We need to take responsibility for our own choices that led us to where we are right now. There are a lot of different ways that we can view the things that happen in our lives and view the things that happen that led us to this point. If we... Um, if we choose to blame all the things outside of ourselves, we're giving our power away. We're giving our power away to those things and we're letting life happen to us. Um, we then become the victim in our story. We don't want to be the victim. We want to be the hero. We want to be the hero of our own story. And you are the hero of your own story. Maybe you just haven't seen it yet. Maybe you just haven't realized it yet. And that's why I want to talk about this today. Um, because there are other people in my life that have brought this to my attention, that have um, helped me to realize that I get to choose today, that I get to create this story, that I get to change the narrative. Um, no one else can do that for me. They can help me to see it. No one else can do that for me. No one else can um, change things for me. So we also need to hold ourselves accountable to what we say we're going to do. So we're, now we're taking responsibility of our own lives. We're taking responsibility of our choices, our decisions. Now we need to hold ourselves accountable. So there's this thing in my life I want to change, right? Whether it's, um, let's just say it's the way that I speak to myself, right? My self-talk. Um, I used to speak very critically of myself and in ways that I wouldn't speak to other people that I was trying to love and support in their process, right? So I've turned that around. I've started... Um, speaking to myself in the way that I would speak to others to help lift them up. So we want to lift ourselves up, right? 
So I want to lift myself up. I have to take the responsibility for the way that I've been speaking to myself and then hold myself accountable to change that. So I'm going to pay attention to my thought patterns now. I'm going to pay attention to um, when something happens, um, whether good or not so good, um, however I view that, what is the immediate thoughts that come up for me? How do I start to speak to myself in that moment? I need to pay attention to that. I need to become aware of that. And then I need to consciously work to change that. Um, I need to consciously work to speak to myself in a different way. Instead of saying, you know, I suck at this. I'm never going to be good at this. No one is going to like this thing that I've made, whatever it is. Um, I can say I am learning. Wow, I, this didn't turn out how I thought it did, but I learned a lot in this process. Um, I'm going to get better at this. I'm going to keep working at this. So these simple shifts that we can make um, to build ourselves up, right? And hold myself accountable to build myself up in that way. Because no amount of exterior compliments or approval or validation from other people is going to take root if I don't validate myself. And if I don't recognize myself, and if I don't, um, you know, compliment myself and recognize my own strengths, um, my husband can tell me um, any number of times how beautiful I look, how strong I am, how whatever the, the compliment may be that he's intending to lift me up with. If I don't believe that about myself, um, you know, it's, it's not going to take root. So I need to start believing that about myself. I need to consciously start shifting that thought pattern and be accountable to myself in that way. So the third thing is to set boundaries. Boundaries, I end up talking about a lot in this group. Um, it comes up during the Take Back Your Time Challenge a lot. Um, we need to set boundaries in our lives with ourselves and others. So a boundary is a, a limit that we set and limit not in a negative way, but or um you know, a, a parameter that we set around how we interact with other people and things in our lives, right? So boundaries are really important it, because it's really important for our self-care. It allows us um, the space to uh, make decisions in alignment with what's be best for us. Um, it allows us the space to grow and change. And not having them leads to anger, resentment, burnout, overwhelm. It doesn't help us to step into the best version of ourselves. We end up, um, you know, without boundaries, letting life happen to us. And we're not taking charge of our own circumstances if we're not setting boundaries. So it's very, very important. So we need to learn a little bit about ourselves to know how to set these boundaries and where we need a boundary um, and, and where that is, what the limit is, what we're okay with, what we're not okay with. Um, hi, Sarah. Thanks for joining. So we need to set these boundaries in our lives, whether this is, um, you know, what we're allowing in our space, relationships with people, how we're being treated, how we're treating other people, um, you know, what kinds of behaviors are okay with us, what kinds of behaviors are not, um, who we allow in our immediate circle, who we allow in our home, who we do not, um, you know, and it's not so much like a person as um, in this instance, like if, if there's someone that I don't want to allow in my home, it's not so much the person as it is maybe their behavior, right? So um, that's a whole other topic, but um, setting boundaries in our lives, um, deciding what's okay with us and what's not, and clearly communicating that with the other people in our lives. So um, there's an extra step in setting boundaries, and that is communication. We want to communicate our boundaries as clearly and as simply as possible with the other people in our lives. Um, and this is going to help us to um, take care of ourselves and protect ourselves from harm, from potential harm in our lives, right? And we need to do this so that we can, um, so that we can build a foundation and set the stage for us to move into the next step, which is to step up and take action in our lives. So all of this stuff is nice and well. Um, it's nice to plan out all these ideas, but if we don't actually take the action and do something with it, nothing happens. We get the same thing that we've always had, right? So if we don't make a change, if we don't take an action, um, 
we're not going to see any difference in our lives. So we need to take this step and take action and do the things, right? We need to do these things, even when it's scary, even when we're unsure, even when it's a bit uncomfortable. I want to remind you that growth lies outside of our com comfort zone. Um, you know, all the all the good leaps and bounds that I've made in my life have come um, outside of my comfort zone, where I pushed myself a little bit past that, um, you know, that resistance, that barrier that I had, and embraced being a little bit discom um, uncomfortable and embraced that discomfort for a minute to grow, to learn something new, to push myself. And there's a balance there, right? We want to make sure that what we're doing is aligned with our why for our lives, something I talk about a lot. Um, we want to um, actually step in and do the work that it takes to be the hero of our own story. So it's nice to, um, you know, come up with an idea that I'm going to um, be more mindful about people and things that I include in my life. Um, but I actually have to set the boundaries to communicate that, to then take the action to make that happen, to um, to hold myself accountable to my own boundaries. I have to take the action. I can have all the ideas in my head um, and talk to myself about it, but I need to take the action to make that happen. So what is it in your life that you want to be doing? You know, what is this life that you want to create? And how are you going to become the hero of your own story? What steps are you going to take? hopefully the ones that I've outlined for you, um, because this is how it happens. This is how we make it happen. Nicholas says, I'm guessing for boundaries with self, it is helpful to write them down. Yes, it is helpful to write any of this stuff down, really, um, because sometimes along the way, you know, we get caught up and sometimes um, we get overwhelmed and we feel a little bit lost and it's good to go back and look at what we've written down. Journaling is super helpful. So writing these down is always going to be helpful. Um, anytime we, we need to just remember, or we need to do a reset, or it makes it more concrete. When we start to write it down and we start to tell other people, it brings it into reality. It's one thing to have the thoughts in our head. It's another thing to actually bring it into focus um, and, and share it and get it out there in the universe. So writing it down is really helpful. Um, you know, and setting boundaries with myself might look something like, um, you know, I'm going to set aside this amount of time each day to do this for myself. Um, and I am not going to allow myself to get distracted by Facebook. I am not going to allow myself to get distracted by my kids. I am not going to allow myself to get distracted by whatever it might be. Um, I need to set these boundaries with myself, right? And, um, you know, no, I'm not going to eat that donut because I'm trying to watch my sugar intake and like setting that boundary with myself. And, um, you know, it's, it's, um, tricky sometimes at first to start implementing these boundaries, um, not only with ourselves, but especially with other people, because we often, uh, will get a little bit of natural resistance, especially if the people in our lives are not used to us setting boundaries. And we do this with ourselves too. So anytime we're trying to implement something new, set some new boundaries for ourselves. Um, sometimes we resist ourselves and it's just because we are familiar and comfortable with what we've already been doing. We know, um, we know that we're familiar with that. And so it's a little bit uncomfortable to change it. Um, but if we know that, if we have an awareness around that, we can recognize when we're doing it. So writing stuff down is very helpful. So back to taking action. Um, we need to start looking at uh, those different areas of our lives that, um, you know, and, and look at everything on a whole, the things that we like and that we enjoy, we want to create more of that. The things that we don't, taking another look at that, taking, um, looking at it from a different perspective. Is this something that we can change? Is this something that we want to change about our story? Um, is this something that we can take steps to change right now? Sometimes there are certain things in our life that are just a temporary thing that are there that need to be done that maybe we don't enjoy as much, but it's a stepping stone to greater things. So really taking a look at um, what is your vision? What do you want your days to look like, right? And start taking action to make that happen and be the hero of your own story. Don't give your power away to all the circumstances outside yourself. Yes, things are going to happen that are out of our control, but we get to decide how we react to 
We get to decide how to respond. We get to decide what action to take. And so on the note of action, I wanted to let you all know that the Take Back Your Time Challenge is returning. One week from today, we kick off. And I'm going to teach you in this challenge how to reclaim two plus hours back to your days. So we dive into um, a lot of really valuable stuff in this challenge that has so much more to do with just organizing your schedule and getting organized. We dive into stuff like boundaries and taking action and, um, you know, really getting to know what your why is. And so it goes deeper than that. And um, really setting yourself up for success so that your days can start to look like you want them to be. So throughout the Take Back Your Time Challenge, not only are we going to reclaim two plus hours back to your day, but I'm going to help you with those steps to become the hero of your own story so you can do that. And, um, you know, it's one thing to learn all of this stuff. It's another thing to take the action to do it. And so that's why I do this challenge, because I like to spend the week with you all to help support you in implementing these things. Um, the support through the implementation is huge um, and to help keep you accountable and help you to keep yourself accountable. And so I invite you to join me for the Take Back Your Time Challenge. I will drop the link below and I will be posting about it in the group this week. I know there are a bunch of you that have come in new to this group and I welcome you. Thank you for joining us. A lot of you have come in for the challenge specifically. And so we kick off one week from today. This is the sixth uh, time that I have done this challenge and I love doing it every time. It's amazing to watch the transformation that happens and to watch women and mom, moms step up and become empowered versions of themselves throughout this challenge. It becomes about so much more than just taking back your time. Um, but that's what you get. You get your time back and you get a piece of your life back. Time is so valuable, right? And so, um, Throughout this, throughout this challenge, you get all the support from me um, that you could possibly get. Um, we, we interact in the group. Uh, there's a daily training that releases at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we do a live implementation and Q&A session at 4 p.m. each day so that you can jump on with me, ask me all of your questions, get support through the process. You can reach me through the group. You can reach me on Messenger. Um, I also typically do some coaching calls. And so there's usually some spots for people to jump in on a coaching call one-to-one -one with me throughout the week. And I really want to help you succeed at this um, because we end up sometimes on this hamster wheel where um, we look back and we're like, gosh, like, where did the time go and how did I get here, right? How many times have you asked yourself, how did I get here? And when do I get to enjoy these things that I dream about in my life? Like, when does this happen for me? I remember that being in that state, I remember um, very vividly wondering, like, when do I get a break? Like, when does the stuff that um, that people promised would happen when I'm successful, when does that come in? Uh, the truth was I needed to make that happen for myself. And so uh, next week, I'm going to share with you the steps to take back your time to start um, reclaiming that time in your day so you can focus on the things that are more, more important to you. So you can focus on the things that matter and start to create that vision that you dream of. Um, it's right there within your grasp. It is there for the taking for you. You just need to know how to do it, right? We need to know sometimes what steps to take. And so I want to help you with that next week. So let me know if you have any questions at all about today's topic or about the challenge next week. Um, super excited to kick that off. Um, it's, it's really, truly, it's really awesome to see, um, you know, people changing their lives throughout the week. This challenge in itself is life changing. And there's some exciting things happening during the challenge. Not only do you get free coaching and lots of support, um, there are prizes. There are prizes for people that show up to the live streams, um, later in the day for the implementation and the Q&A session. I pick one person randomly for each live that gets a prize. And there's also a full paid scholarship to my 12-week mentorship program, Your Simplified Life, that is available for one lucky person who shows up during the challenge, engages, 
goes through all the trainings and does all the homework because yes, there's going to be homework. Um, I don't really like the word homework, but there are action steps to take and homework is an easy way to state that. I know some people have kind of a, a trigger around the word homework, um, but for one lucky person who shows up and does all the work, uh, I'm going to invite you into your simplified life on a full paid scholarship. And I'm super excited to welcome somebody in with us. Sarah says, yes, challenge is fantastic. Thanks for sharing, Sarah. Thank you for uh, joining us here. Sarah and Nicola and Candace have all been through your simplified life. Um, and it's, it's really awesome to see how it changes people's lives. Nicola says action steps are great. Yes, so each day you get an action step to take um, to, and they all build on each other. So it's very important to um, make sure that you've watched each training before the next one because they all build on each other um, and everything builds off of day one. So definitely don't miss day one. There are replays. So if you cannot show up for the live times, uh, you can watch the replays uh, up until Tuesday the 24th. At that point, all videos and trainings come down, but you will have ample time to watch the trainings to catch up if you missed something. So don't panic if you can't be there, um, you know, right at the um, training time and the live time. No big deal. The replays are in the group and uh, you will have those available. So when you sign up for the challenge, you get a welcome guide and a workbook. And in the welcome guide is everything you need to know about the challenge, as well as the schedule. And at the end of the welcome guide is the workbook that you will need to implement throughout the challenge and to do the homework. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I am here for you all. Uh, just a reminder that this group is a very supportive community. This community is for you. So ask your questions of the group, you know, post in the group, share your wins, share your experiences. Uh, don't hesitate to post in this group. You can share in this group. Um, you can ask questions. It doesn't necessarily have to be to me directly, though you can ask me questions. Um, share with the group. It's really helpful for everyone to uh, to see people's questions, to see people's progress before and after pics. Um, so I encourage you to become part of the community and don't hesitate to share and asking questions that you have. So with that, I am going to hop off of here. I'm working pretty hard at keeping the trainings much more focused because uh, I know your time is valuable. And I know that many of you are here because you are trying to simplify and trying to get your time back. And um, so time is something that a lot of people feel pretty short on when they first come to me. So uh, thank you for joining me. And I will talk to you all soon. And keep being courageously intentional. I will see you in the group.